Hi, I'm Matt Wyant uh, with Chocolatel Small Batch Chocolate. And I'm Elaine Reed. And uh, we're going to tell you today about how we make chocolate. So, uh, this is our production site and retail shop at Prague Street Market. Uh, we do all of the chocolate making here on site, straight from the cacao beans. So, this is a bag of our Peruvian cacao. Uh, it comes from a cooperative in Tumbes, Peru. Uh, this is about 60 kilos of uh, organic cacao that's been fermented and sun-dried and the first step in our process here is to roast the beans so this is our uh, simple commercial convection oven that we use we can roast about 20 pounds of beans at a time and uh, we have to do about five uh, roasts to make a full batch of our small batch chocolate after we roast the beans come over here to our a uh, very uh, homemade uh, cracker. We use a uh, just a hopper and we've got some um, gears here, the uh, mill basically that crushes the beans and uh, rips the shells off of the uh, beans. Uh, we capture uh, both the beans and the shells and then we use our also homemade winnowing machine. Uh, this is this is version one which is uh, seen better days, and we have version 2.0 will be here probably tomorrow. Actually, that wow, we check are, that out. That is so cool. <laughs> that we are working on uh, at home. That I'm just putting the finishing touches on. But essentially, the beans, uh, the nibs, and the shell drop through this column. Uh, there's a suction uh, that's happening on this side, and the beans, which are heavy, will drop all the way through to the bottom. The shells will get sucked off to the side and we will there, uh, therefore separate the husk from the nibs. And you made this yourself, you invented this prototype. Uh, I wouldn't say I invented it. I uh, actually, we found a seed cleaner design online and we used that design to, uh, to mod make some modifications, but we built it ourselves. That's ingenious. And, uh, and we're working on the second version, which is gonna be a little bit better, a little improved. So after we have the nibs, we come over to our uh, stone grinder and this is where we add the nibs and organic cane sugar. So this uh, is going now? This is running right now. This is, we just put in uh, Trinidadian cacao this morning. Uh, there uh, is about 60 pounds of cacao in here right now. And I'll let you take a look at what we've got. You can see some of the nibs are still, haven't been fully pulverized yet. Wow, but look at that. It smells, um, it smells incredible. The, uh, the chocolate aroma? Yeah. It's just, it's, I, I wish everyone on YouTube could be smelling what I smell right now. It smells yeah, wonderful. absolutely. And uh, the roasting also smells great. There's a lot of good smells that happen in chocolate making. So what happens in here is there's no heated element in here, but the stones crush the nibs. And as they do that, the friction heats the nibs and the cocoa butter that's naturally in the beans releases and it turns into this, which is chocolate liqueur. It's a liquid chocolate. <coughs> Excuse me, we add organic cane sugar and that's it. We don't add additional cocoa butter. We don't add soy less than them. We don't add any milk fat. So it's two ingredient chocolate. And we grind here for uh, two to three days, depending on which bean we're using. Our Trinidad, we do a little bit shorter grind, so we do that for two days. And there's a process not just of smoothing out the chocolate, but also uh, conching, heating, and burning off some of the acidity, some of the tannins that are naturally in the chocolate bean. So when we're done grinding, we come over to our fancy Italian tempering machine that uh, is specifically designed to be able to handle two ingredient chocolate, which is more difficult to work with than your average chocolate because it doesn't have the added cocoa butter or any emulsifiers in it. It's a thicker chocolate and because we do uh, single origin, each of our beans behaves a little bit differently. So we have to kind of make adjustments for each bean. What happens here is the melting bowl will heat the chocolate and we are trying to melt out all of the cocoa butter crystal formations that are in the chocolate because there are six different types of crystal formations and we are going for a very specific crystal formation and we want to start by getting rid of all of it and then there is a screw in the back of the tempering machine that sucks the chocolate up and cools the chocolate to a certain uh, point that we have to adjust for each bean varies for each bean but that will give us the right crystal uh, crystallization of the chocolate and that will give it that melt in your mouth not in your hands uh, the right snap, the right texture, everything that you kind of want in a chocolate bar. Well, this chocolate that's coming out through here right now, it just looks so beautiful. 
and it, it smells, folks, it smells incredible. I mean, I, I am in chocolate heaven right now. And this is our Ecuadorian, it's a 73% dark chocolate. Again, this one is just two ingredients. We do some flavored uh, chocolates where we add some additional flavoring ingredients, but this is just a single origin, two ingredient, 73% Ecuadorian chocolate. Then we've got our molds. So once we are, uh, have reached a tempering point, we will stick a mold in here in this depositing head and we will hit our foot pedal on the floor. We're not quite ready yet, but this will actually dose the chocolate into the molds. And then from that point, we will take the molds to our home-built home cooling cabinet. Uh, look at this. Which is uh, designed just for this space. It has uh, six levels of cooling racks, really 12, two on each side. And we can cool about uh, 300 bars at a time in here. There's an air conditioning unit on the other side that cools and, and dehumidifies this because humidity is also a, a danger in chocolate making and we try and limit humidity as much as possible. We have some ingredients over here too, it looks like. We've got some uh, organic vanilla beans. We use this in our Americana bar, which is a our chocolate apple pie bar, a, a bar where we've used our Peruvian cacao and we add vanilla, cinnamon, nutmeg, and some organic dried apple pieces. And this is also some of our organic sea salt. And I will uh, let you taste a piece of our Americana bar. And you can tell me what you Wow, want. folks, I, 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 I look at this. A That's a uh, uh, homemade small batch organic chocolate. Oh, that's good. That, that is just fantastic. So that's how we make chocolate. Uh, we wrap Can you show the us some of the bar? So here we've got a bar that's finished up right over here. Absolutely. This is a our uh, Ecuador 73% bar that came out uh, this morning. And we are getting ready to hand wrap the bars here. And we've got our beautiful wrappers designed by uh, Julia Kubica, a local graphic designer here in Atlanta, who even helped figure out where to make the die cuts so that we could fold these things. And so it's all done right here in shop. And you're, you're, um, tell us just briefly, like, how you got your start with the idea for this, uh, this chocolate <clears throat> Well, uh, my wife Elaine and I were doing things completely unrelated to food, but we uh, decided we wanted to make a change uh, and we packed up the kids and we moved down to Costa Rica for a uh, better part of a year and when we were down in Costa Rica we met folks who were making chocolate really straight from the tree. They were growing the cacao, harvesting the fruit, fermenting, sun drying and then doing the process that you see here. And uh, we really got into it. Uh, we sort of apprenticed with some folks there and uh, came back and decided that we were going to be chocolate makers and here we are. That's fantastic, and um, you're going to be at Morningside Farmer's Market uh, yeah, very, coming up soon. Yeah, very excited. to. Uh, we have been focused really solely on getting our, our site here at Prague Street Market up and off the ground, but uh, we're very excited. Morningside is going to be our first uh, post Krog Street Farmer's Market, and we're very excited to be there uh, sometime in the next uh, couple of weeks. So. Oh, we're, we're, and that's uh, towards the uh, end of January. Uh, roughly. Yeah. Uh, but we'll make an announcement to all of uh, Farmers Market uh, customers uh, from Morgan Step Farmers Market about that. But uh, we're real excited about this. And um, folks, uh, that chocolate, I can still taste that amazing chocolate uh, taste in my mouth. But we're not talking like candy uh, that you get at the store. This is, uh, this is nature's superfood. Uh, you want to tell us briefly about cacao and what makes cacao a special superfood? Sure. Well, it is packed full of antioxidants uh, and uh, cancer-fighting antioxidants and flavanols that are good for uh, heart health. And really any chocolate that's above 70% uh, is recommended as, as, a, as a healthy uh, food. And we have, uh, one thing that we do is a little different, 99% uh, of the chocolate that you get in the stores, even if it's a dark chocolate, even an 80% dark chocolate, has added cocoa butter. And uh, we don't add additional cocoa butter. They're actually allowed to count the added cocoa butter towards the percentage. Uh, so you might get an 80% dark chocolate bar with added cocoa butter. It might really only be 70% cocoa mass with the additional butter. Uh, that butter doesn't really have any flavor to it. It's a fat that is used and it uh, makes the texture a little different. And uh, I find it a little bit waxy actually, but the uh, by not using cocoa butter, when we get give you an 85% or a 73% uh, dark chocolate bar, you're actually getting 
that quantity of cocoa mass and has uh, all of the good antioxidants and flavanols and, and really I think just as importantly has added taste. It really uh, ramps up the flavor profile of each of the bars. Well, I've been eating a lot of cacao over the past several years. Uh, I identify it as a superfood. And I've got to say, that uh, sample that you gave me is one of the best tasting uh, pieces of chocolate I've had. And I think we're really fortunate to be able to have you uh, producing chocolate locally here in Atlanta and bringing it to Morningside Farmers Market to, to our customers. Well, we appreciate it. We're very excited. Uh, to both be making chocolate and sharing it with the community and, and uh, actually to be in Morningside, which is happens to be where I grew up, the neighborhood that I grew up in. So I'm excited to be back. Okay, well, we'll look forward to hosting you soon. Thanks for the tour. Thank you.